Doris Kearns Goodwin is <sighs> someone whom we love. This is the perfect day to bring her in. She's a presidential historian. She's the author of Leadership in Turbulent Times. Um, can we just have your initial reaction? You have studied so many presidents and so much history. Just where does this fall? Well, you know, I can hear the emotion in both of your voices, and it's certainly felt in my heart as well. I mean, I think it's going to fall as a day that will be remembered for a long period of time, one of those days we live through and we know that people will be reading about it 100 years from now. I mean, not only because of what happened at the Capitol, but that it happened at a time when that solemn ceremony that was going to count the votes that happens every four years in that Capitol, one of those important rituals of a peaceful transition of power was taking place, and it disrupted it for a time. But I'm so glad you said they brought themselves back. They finished the job, and some of the Republicans who were going to issue objections decided not to do so, to hurry it up. So the day ended on a better note than it started. And I think just let's hope that somehow, having been through this together as a nation, it will make us say enough is enough. Just like people said after the Selma demonstrations, after the foot soldiers were bludgeoned by, by all sorts of weapons on the part of the Alabama State Police. This is enough. We need a Voting Rights Act. Sometimes these episodes lead to unity. And we're, we need that so badly in the country. So let's just hope that that will happen. Yeah, I mean, I wonder if you think it will. We are two weeks away from Inauguration Day, maybe a little less. Do you see this changing the discourse in our country? Well, I think it already changed part of it last night when you heard the Republican senators speak and decide not to go forward with the objections, when you heard the passion even in McConnell's voice and Romney's voice, when you heard the Democrats saying we have to come together on this. Words begin this. Words started this. Mm -hmm. Words incited this. The words that were given by the president incited this. And we've had all sorts of tribal politics in these last years. And everybody's been saying maybe the fever is broken. It may take a long period of time, but it's happened. When public consciousness changes and the public says to the congressman, we can't deal with this. I mean, Lincoln said, we of this Congress will be remembered either in honor or dishonor by what we do today. And that's our challenge right now. It, will it be honor or will it be dishonor in what happens in the weeks and months ahead? Now, do you think, I mean, I always think we can learn from history. And I was wondering, as we look back, we, they talked about how at one point, I think it was back in 1812, that was the only other time that the Capitol had ever been overrun. Um, is there anything comparable uh, in history um, that, that we can learn, we can take a couple of lessons from? Well, you know, I think what is comparable is that in 1856, a Southern congressman came into the Senate chamber. Now, this is different. This is within Congress rather than outside. And he hit the Massachusetts abolitionist over the head with a cane so many times that he fell unconscious, had to be carried out bloody from the floor, and was not able to return for three years. But what happened to that was that that's what mobilized, in many ways, the early days of the Republican Party, the party of Lincoln, mass meetings outside. This is too much, they said. And moderates and conservatives joined the Republican Party. So maybe the weird thing that may happen from this is that when you see something happening in the Capitol, as we did this time, as they did then, it shouldn't take that to make this understandable. There was all sorts of acts of violence before that. We've seen problems in this country before this day of yesterday. But sometimes those images sear in the hearts. And maybe it will make a, a dawning of a different Republican Party separating from the Trump Party and a look forward to some more unity between Republicans and Democrats in the years to come. Got to believe in it. You got to believe in it. We just showed a beautiful image of the sun rising over the Capitol, which I think gives us all <laughs> hope that, that there is love. Um, I know that you have seen goodness in this country. Mm -hmm. For those of us that have little kids and were scared to even turn mm -hmm. on the news yeah. yesterday or had to stay at work, for yeah. example, like Hoda, because she couldn't yeah. bear for her children to yeah. see these images, will you leave us with a little hope? We've been through really tough times before. I mean, that hope shows us from history. Imagine what it was like to live in those early days of the Civil War, the early days of World War II. Imagine what it was like to live in the Great Depression. And somehow we not only came through those moments, but we emerged stronger. We ended the Civil War with emancipation. 
we ended the Allied war with a victory in World War II and with the end of Hitler. This country, when it comes together, it's truly true, can do anything. And that's what we've got to believe. History has showed us the lessons, the perspectives, but it also should make us know we're at one of those turning points, and we better start making that turn pretty quickly. I, I think that's But I think that, we can that, and we will. That's beautiful advice. And Doris, can I ask just one more follow-up? Because I was looking of at the faces. You can. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking at the faces of the people who were rushing into the Capitol and listening to some of the interviews inside. A couple of reporters got in and they were screaming about, I want to take back my country and you robbed us, et cetera. I, I was thinking, like, h how do you unring that bell? Like, how do you, how can you convince people who are believing, you know, something that they're being told? Like, I, I was wondering, how does that ever, how do you ever come back? Or is that going to be something that just sort of splinters off and becomes its own thing? Well, I think Senator Romney said it well last night. He said, you start by telling them the truth. You tell them the truth of that election was lost. It wasn't stolen. That there were all sorts of court cases, 62, and they were all resolved in favor of Biden. But there's a deeper problem. The problem Teddy Roosevelt outlined at the turn of the 20th century is if people in different sections and parties and, and, and parts of the country begin to see each other as the other rather than as common American citizens, that's the threat to democracy. There is a split between people in the country and the city. And you've got to reach out and understand why the other people are feeling disconnected from the government and begin to reach across those lines and figure out where that discontent is coming from. But that's what leadership can do. That's the main role of leadership, is to, is to use the presidency and the bully pulpit to try and... Teddy Roosevelt went on a trip, on a train. He would go from one state to another. Every state he lost, as well as states he'd won, and talk about common American citizenship, what we share, not what is dividing us. Yeah. And that's the kind of leadership we need to start healing this process today. And Doris, thank you so much. Your historical perspective always thank comforts you, Doris. us. And you guys, her book is Leadership. I'm always glad to be with you. Thank you. Thank leadership you. and Turbulent Times.